Uh, continuous mode, if I hit the shutter button once, this is going to take three pictures for me in very rapid succession. AEB, in the old days when I was trying to take a picture of a neon street at night, I would take a brand new roll of film, I'd put it in my camera, put it on a tripod, and I'd open the f-stop all the way open, and I'd open the shutter speed all the way open, and I'd take a picture. Close the f-stop and shutter speed, take a picture. F-stop, shutter speed, take a picture. F-stop, shutter speed. Called bracketing. Out of an entire roll of 36 pictures, one was going to be perfectly exposed. Next, next 35 I'd throw away. Essentially, the camera's going to do the same thing for me. It's going to take three pictures in rapid succession, one where it feels the proper exposure setting is, one exposure setting higher, and one lower. So out of the three pictures, I'm bound to end up with one that's got just perfect exposure for me. It's pretty cool. Again, when you're taking these number of pictures, when you have 7,000 shots available to you, you can play with these different things. It's not going to make a, a hill of beans on uh, processing. Uh, with album shot, this is going to allow me to see what my albums are going to look like before I even take the pictures. So I want my first shot to look like this. I want my second shot, I hope I don't have pictures of these, to look like this. I want my third shot to look like this. I go back into play. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And there's what my album page is going to look like. I can put this on the computer, hit print, and print this off. So you don't have to cut pictures out and then glue them back in. It's going to be already set like that. It's pretty cool stuff. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Need an SD card. <laughs> um, first, as long as I hold the shutter button down, the camera's going to continually take pictures. At some point, I will overwhelm the card. There's, it's going to come up with the right error. I can't keep up with you. Just let up. Ease off on the shutter button, and it's going to catch up. Uh, continuous flash. If I hit the shutter button once, it triggers the external flash on the camera three times. It triggers the external strobe three times. Uh, Pre-shot and couple shot are pretty unique. These are available on land only. But say if I wanted to get a picture of the group and Jerry wasn't here. And I could take the first picture with this, as long as I didn't take another picture, it would be saved as a transparency on the camera, it wouldn't write to the card. Jerry could come in, and I could work him into the right-hand side of the picture and make it look like he'd been there all along. Call it the alibi maker. That's scary. <laughs> <laughs> Not that you'd ever need it. And then uh, with the, uh, that's pre-shot, with couple shot, I could work somebody into the back of the room, uh, backward and forward, the other one is right and left. Well, that's a photo shot. Pretty much a photo shot. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah built-in LFI maker. So we have the couple shot, and then we do have a 30 frames per second burst. All I have to do is hit the shutter button once, and in one second it's going to rip off 30 pictures for me. Pretty amazing. <laughs> for something the size of a deck of playing cards. Uh, quick shot is uh, we can actually disable the automatic focus. Some people say that it takes too long to focus. Uh, the fastest or Probably the slowest the camera's going to shoot in uh, external flash mode is a 60th of a second once you have that green focus square. The, what they're perceiving to be light time is the amount of time it takes the camera to focus, especially over distances. But once you get that green focus square, it's a very, very fast camera. If we turn quick shot on, we would basically set everything from here to infinity in focus. Everything would be in focus from that point on. The camera becomes a point and shoot instamatic camera at that point. And what's the quality of the shot? It's still going to be the 14 megapixel. You just don't so have, you're the, have optimum light. You're going to have optimum. It's still going to choose the f-stop and shutter speed based on your scene mode as well. So there's no drawback. Why wouldn't you leave uh, it on that all the time? Uh, because if I want to do my close focus with uh, the super macro setting, for instance, where I want to get down to an inch, it doesn't correspond as well to us because it's just too wide open. Uh, to me, the the automatic focus in different conditions is worth. Uh, you certainly can use this if somebody says, oh, here comes the whale sharks, everybody in the water. Those things you have one shot at, it's like a five mile an hour moving freight train. You just get in and start shooting pictures. You don't have to worry about focus, autofocus at all. I prefer the autofocus, but you can take that off if you want. Uh, this is where we've turned our digital zoom off and on. I leave this on just for demonstration purposes, but this is where you would turn off the, the right hand side of that bar. Uh, fine blur is going to be a three pictures in very rapid succession. Each one, the sharpness is going to be controlled a little bit more. If your picture is just a little bit blurry between the three pictures, you're going to end up with a good shot. It's pretty cool. 
uh, date and print. This is where the date and time is put on the bottom of every picture you take. If you do get your National Geographic photo shot of a lifetime and you have this turned on, there's no getting it back out. So you either have to crop it out or try going in with a paintbrush and filling mm -hmm. it in. But uh, I tend to leave that off. Just. The SD card would be okay. The SD card will put the date on for you. Oh, okay. Like when you download it to your computer, at least when I do it, the date shows up with it if the, if the date is set right in the camera. In the property of the mm -hmm. pictures? Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. The date, the geolocation, everything the NSA is looking at. This is where we would set the date and time of the camera when it comes out of the factory. Uh, if anybody speaks different languages, you can put it into Italian, Portuguese, uh, Sichuan, Chinese, uh, Turkish any of these different languages. Um, I've got mine set usually at a three minute off, uh, auto off. If you leave it uh, 30 seconds of inactivity, the back of the screen goes, goes dark. <coughs> After three minutes of inactivity, for instance, the whole camera turns off. If it does turn off and here comes the whale sharks, pull the camera up, hit the power button, within four seconds you're booted up and ready to shoot. So let the camera go to sleep every once in a while. Don't be too worried about it. Uh, we can turn a display uh, beep off and on. Every time you hit a button, you're going to hear an electronic beep. We can make that go away if you want to also. It's, in my opinion, just one more thing to scare the fish away. I tend to leave mine turned on. Uh, a lot of people are saying that the display is good, but all of those icons, they're confusing. They don't understand them. Is there anything I can do to make them go away? So we're going to come down to standard. And now we've eliminated... So now once we've put it on standard, we've eliminated the histogram, we've eliminated the date and the time, the auto uh, white balance over on the side, and the uh, quality setting as well. A uh, lot more of the pertinent information, you've still got your focus square, battery life, uh, SD card, number of pictures, and your shooting mode. So that's pretty good. But if it's still too much for you, you can come down and turn everything off, and then you get a completely uninhibited view of the screen. Now, how do we know when it's okay to shoot? We lost our focus square. We're just going to hit the shutter button halfway down. The camera's still going to let me know when it's okay to shoot. So this is really nice. If you get distracted by things, bright shiny objects, beer cans, fishing boats, UFOs, uh, that is a real nice screen to be able to look at this as well. <laughs> Uh, this is where we would format our SD cards. Uh, again, we would put the SD card into the camera, come down to format, go over to yes, and hit the shutter button. Uh, we haven't found any number of times that you can format an SD card. Quite often, if you do any type of a, uh, a race after transfer, after you download your pictures onto your computer off the SD card, and you say erase, all it does is removes the uh, pointer to those pictures. Quite often, all of those pictures are left on the SD cards. So it's taking up space on the SD card, it's making it write slower, uh, limiting your capabilities with the card and everything else. So every once in a while, go back through and download your pictures, back them up, back them up, back them up, back them up one more time, and then do a hard format on your card. Again, it's just going to erase everything on there. Uh, make sure it is backed up, though, because if you don't, you will erase everything. My mother-in-law just lost her trip to Cuba. Uh, uh, Once-in-a-lifetime trip, and she lost all of her pictures to Cuba because she formatted instead of copied and downloaded. So. Uh, it's a great tool, but uh, a little bit scary to work with sometimes. Actually, you can pay a copy of that back there. Uh, they've formatted it, though. The card has been formatted. Just no, no, there's people that do it. You know. okay, I mean, okay. you have to rewrite drills in one, so it's oh. <laughs> really good offer. Yeah, probably easier just to take another trip. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, there's people that will do that. Yeah, okay. Uh, System information is nice to have. This is the actual version that the cameras or the firmware that the cameras are, are running. So I was telling Emmanuel there's a uh, site on our website. If you go to www.clife-cameras.com and go to technical area, 
in downloads. We can go onto the, the website and see if there's a more recent version. Say if we had uh, two or 1.5.14, you could take a, a blank SD card and copy that file onto the SD card. Take the file or the SD card, put it back into the computer, hold the shutter button down and turn it back on. The camera will download that entire new firmware uh, without having to send the camera back in or anything else as well. So it's a real nice feature to be able to see. Make sure you've got the most recent version of the firmware coming up as well. I believe that is the most recent version, but I had a problem with it the other night. I could not get that to download right, but it may be an issue with my computer. It's a bin file, is what it's called. Right, right? it's a bin file. Did you have anything on the SD card? No, I didn't even I didn't get that far yet. Oh, okay. The computer's got a slot for the SD card. I, I've got some issues with that computer. Oh, okay. Yeah, if it doesn't work, let us know. That, that should work pretty well. Just copy it, you know, click and drag it onto the SD card icon, yeah. and it should go. And then if you just get yourself lost, 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 you can come back in. If somebody gets hold of your camera and puts it in Turkish, and you're in spy mode, and uh, sepia, and you don't remember how to change these things, you can come back into a system reset and set all of the pictures back to a system default coming out of the factory. So you never really get yourself too lost with the camera system. Now, before we had the DC 1400, I liked the 800 was my favorite camera because it allowed me to do so many more different things. Uh, as we talked about, we did have the uh, focus setting. We have an auto setting. We have an auto focus tracking. We have a system that's going to detect faces for you automatically. We have a macro setting. This is going to be from about four inches out to infinity with your subject. We have an infinity setting that's anything from about a foot out from your subject. Or we have the super macro setting. And this is going to allow me to close focus my camera down to an inch. So that's pretty sweet to be able to get that close to it. So right away, the camera's already got a 26 millimeter wide angle bit lens built into it. It's got the color correction for the C and snorkel mode, so you don't have any type of red filters on the outside of it. And then it's got the super macro setting as well, so you don't need any type of a macro lens on the outside of your camera. So once you buy everything, you're pretty well set. You don't need anything else. Uh, we do have an optional 16 millimeter fisheye, that uh, that's the meat of the coconut right there. That's everything you need with that 16 millimeter. But uh, the entire system is designed to work together as well. So. Uh, any questions on the camera at all? I have one question now. How or what changes from the 1200? Okay. Um, um, yeah. The biggest thing with the, the 1200 is it uh, doesn't have the HD video. It just has the AVI format video. Still 30 frames per second mm -hmm. records with sound. This is 720p, so it's got additional lines in it. It's got two more megapixels in the photography setting. Mm -hmm. In the easy setup mode, it has a, an actual setting for the strobe and photo video light where you would have to set yours up in the manual white or the white balance area under cloudy to get the two to work. And then it's got the super macro setting as well. So those are the only differences. The, the, easy, uh, the easy setup, just leave everything else alone? That or would, can you go in and tweak some of it without blowing out the rest of it? You can still go in and tweak things, but this camera is much smarter than I. You know, I I'm gonna let the camera do the work for me. Does this, that camera that you could buy fit in the old or the other case? No. <laughs> no. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. We learned I that. Have, I have lots of Halsey's. We have lots of Halsey's. Are you interested in the Halsey's? <laughs> <laughs> with, with, with the 1200, you have your video button up on top, and now it's worked into the bottom of it. Uh, we lost the delete button on the 1400. So you, you know, in order to put the video down by the side, we have to build in the housing for it. Does the 1200 housing have the piano keys? Yes. That it, I mean, that's that is really nice. I mean, yeah. from the 600, I think, no, I missed one while we were cool. <laughs> well, we had the, uh, I started with the 500, then we went to the 600, and 800, 1,000, 2,000, and now the 1,200, the 1,400. But each one of them just been an incremental step in technology. Yeah. So, you weren't there. <laughs> um, out of the country. You guys are the. The first group in Wisconsin to see this. This is the brand new Sea Dragon system. We just introduced this, as Jerry was saying a couple weeks ago, during a big trade show down in, in uh, Orlando. Um, the Sea Dragon system has got a series of red buttons, and anytime you have a red button, those are just going to be a quick release. So if you just put this 1200 back on there, 
2,000 lumen photo video light. Uh, we also have, with our old systems, we had trouble getting the strobes down to where we needed it right in front of the camera. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to quick release this. I'm going to take the optional flex arms. And I'm going to be able to put a second flex arm up on top here if I want. And then I'm going to put my strobe up on top. And now I'm going to be able to put my strobes up to two and a half feet away from me for better pictures. More importantly, I'm going to be able to come down and put the strobe exactly where I wanted it. We never had that flexibility before. And virtually silent. We developed a new uh, Teflon material. Uh, we can actually, if we wanted to, once again, just take this off. If you get two of the flex arms, it solves a lot of problems, but if you just have the one, now we can come over here, add it to our photo video lights, and just customize our system any way, shape, or form that we want it. Really, really nice. So now we can come over with our photo video light for fill-in, got our strobe over here, just a real nice compact system as well. And we've always had a cutout up on top for a cold shoe mount. We've never really used anything with it. But we now have a small little adapter. So this is going to slide right on top. If anybody is looking for a focusing light or a modeling light. You know, that could be hooked up here to your spear gun. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. So we just, uh, we just slide this right in. <laughs> That's right. Oh no, I have, I have, I have, yeah, you're recording it too, right? Yeah. So you just put this on, close the door. Now you've got the cold shoe mount up on top, and then we can take our photo video light. If you don't want to take a camera and tray system down, we can just put the photo video light right on top of our camera. Uh, anybody who's shooting GoPros, there are some YS mounts we can. Uh, make a GoPro work on here as well. If you have backscatter and need to get the light away from the camera, again, we just take our arms off, put the photo video light up on top, and it just goes in in one direction. And then we're able to put all the light we want to wherever we want with our systems. It's really nice. That is nice. That is so nice. Now, the strobe this year is going to be much smaller, more compact than our old strobe. Uh, it's going to be the oh, same. Oh, that's your stroke on you, that old one. That's your old one. It's going to be the, the same heat index, the same power as the strobes. We've eliminated the magnetic switch up on top, and we've put oversized buttons on here, so all you have to do is just push with your fingers. Even with gloves on, we can turn it on. Uh, big, bright flash pattern to it. Turn this back off. We do have 1 to 100% settings and 1% increments. We have a full setting, automatic setting in here as well. So put it in automatic, and this little sensor up on the top will automatically determine the, the reflectivity of my subject. In 35 thousandths of a second, this will be determined how much flash to apply. I get my green focus square down here, hit the shutter button. The onboard flash on the camera goes off and is captured by the fiber optic cable in the flash link adapter and comes up and triggers the strobe. So it's a, a poor man's TTL, it's a, a slave strobe system but it's a very inexpensive way and very reliable way to make sure that the flashes work for us as well. If you do buy the camera system, uh, the pro set would be the strobe, the camera, and the housing, and this side of the tray would be a single tray. If you want to upgrade, the double tray is available, and then you would get the uh, buy the grip separately, or if you bought the grip and the photo video light, you would get the light and the video light and then be able to use the C-Dragon system just keep building your system however you want it to work. It's pretty nice. Uh, the photo video light, this is a gold one. We have a silver one also that's a 1200 lumen light. This is actually 2000 lumens. And it's kind of tough to see in here. But it's got a great big beautiful burn pattern to it. It's got a 100 degree uh, angle of coverage. It's a race. So uh, no hot spots to it at all, so it really provides good video. We also have power settings in here. This is 2,000 lumens, 1,000, and a full 500 lumens. So we can downsize it. Uh, better if you're trying to just fill in shadows or anything else. You could have the strobe going off over here. Shoot your photo, vid shoot your photo video light in from the side. 
<laughs> they're durable too. And she's durable. They're heavy effort. They don't oh, fall that fast underwater. Because <laughs> <laughs> you could come in like this, you'd have the flash coming over here, and then you could angle your photo video light in to fill shadows on the back side of your pictures. This is really a nice feature. Uh, turn this off, just hold the button in, flashes three times. The nice thing about this also is all of the electronics are hermetically sealed inside this area of, this, of the uh, photo video light. So if this does flood on you, all you have to do... When it floods on you? Why would it flood on you? Just unscrew the battery pack, clean this out, clean off the gold-plated contacts on the inside of it, drop a new battery compartment in, and your light's going to function perfectly. Rechargeable batteries? Uh, we, we can recharge these, yes. Okay. It comes with a charger and the AC adapter as well. So this is a pretty nice little system. It's very compact. Uh, yeah, it's really nice. Red buttons, those red buttons are me. I like those a lot. So if anybody would like to play with this a little bit, we can pass this around. Now one thing too is I do have a 16 millimeter fisheye lens here. And what I invite you to do is just look across the room and see what you can see from side to side. Get your left and right reference and then put this lens on. It's just going to pop right in place. Pull it off, just pull this down. This is going to increase your field of vision by about 50%. So it's going to go from 80 degrees up to 110 degrees. So conceivably with this, you can take three pictures and cover an entire 360 degree around the horizon.